All right, guys, great news. There's two rings missing on cylinder one. <laughs> What's up guys, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Streetcar Shenanigans. We are working on a new project, so I wanna bring you guys an a intro to a new project. Now this car belongs to uh, Johnny and Jessica, they're in uh, like central Illinois, and they've been a huge supporter of Streetcar Shenanigans since we got started. Uh, so much so that they've been talking about bringing their car here for quite some time, and they finally sold the motorcycle to say, hey, you know what, we'd we rather get the car running this year. So we got rid of the bike, and now we want you to take care of the car. So I wanna give you guys a quick once over, kind of an idea of what we're gonna be doing with it, and uh, this episode will be tearing it apart, and obviously we'll bring you another one, putting it back together uh, with some of the solutions in mind. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, subscribe down below, and let's get started. All right, so this is Johnny's 90 GT. It's what I would call like a standard bolt-on car. You know, it's got subframe connectors. It's got aftermarket control arms. Uh, just solid, you know, no, no adjustable, but solid poly. It's got single adjustable coilovers in the back. Although they're missing some hardware, so we'll have to address that. Disclaimer, Johnny asked me, don't rip on his car too bad. I guess we rip on cars pretty bad, we don't mean to. And like I said in the last video, we're not perfect either. We just want to make sure that if there's something that we don't know, it's definitely something that we're going to get addressed by somebody who knows it better than we do. And a lot of times people aren't doing it that way, so that, that might be one of the things that differentiate us from the others. I'm looking at this axle and it doesn't look like it's hanging out of the car evenly. Uh, more than likely, those wild ride torque boxes that are up there with a uh, mediocre fabrication skill. Uh, Johnny's going to kill me showing you guys this. He's not going to be happy. Let's just say that Matt from Wisconsin Race Cars did not install these. Let's just make that very clear. But it's got that, it's got spin tech mufflers, which we're pretty excited because I, I like the sound of those. I haven't worked on one with it, but they sound good on, online. It's got uh, short subframe connectors welded in, kinda. Uh, it's got some kind of custom exhaust piece together, which is, looks like it works fine. Should be enough for what we're working with here. Uh, it's got a T5. It's got a modified oil pan, so we're gonna be changing that. He brought us a standard oil pan. Um, so we're gonna swap that out. He brought us a new rack. We're gonna swap that out because it's leaking everywhere, all over the floor. It's got Maximum Motorsports control arms, TZ, Team ZK member. Uh, I think that pretty much sums up the bottom. Oh, it does have coilovers in the front. One of my favorite parts about the car are the 17 pony wheels. Now one of the things that you guys are probably going to like or we'll get some criticism on is that this is a 90 so it was originally an EFI car and it has been swapped to a carburetor. Not that it really bothers me all that much because my car was a 91, I should say is a 91, and it was also swapped to a carburetor, but mine came as a roller. So we don't know what this car's history is, I put a carb on mine just to get it running, but the benefit is, is that this car is going to be set up not quite as wild as my car, but we're going to put the fuel system off of my car on it, the fuel, the fuel tank, fuel lines fuel regulator, the uh, regulator to carb lines, and then he got a carburetor that was very similar to mine. So we're gonna kinda reincarnate that. Then there's a, obviously a bunch of wiring nightmare on it also. We're gonna try to address that as, that as much as we can uh, too. So I'm gonna lower the car down, show you guys what the rest of it looks like before we start ripping it apart. All right, so continuing the walk around on Johnny's 90. It's got a twisted, or a trick flow stage one camshaft in it, which is probably a little bit of a mismatch to everything else that he's got going on here. But it's got uh, shorty headers. It has a uh, Victor Junior intake manifold. Just an MSD mechanical advanced distributor, I'm hoping. I haven't actually looked close at this. So it seems like, not sure what that's set up like. So that's going to be something that we're going to be working on. Line lock. Looks like a lot of the wiring has been minimalized. So, uh, I mean, it's a little messy, but they've already got rid of a lot of the EFI harness, if not all of it. Inside, it's got some pro car seats that he's working on repairing. But otherwise, it's the same as my notch, as far as color is concerned. Bunch of parts, pretty clean. The steering wheel has some damage. You know, the gauge has some weird stuff. Otherwise, it's, I mean, it's a pretty rust-free car. It's really clean underneath. The paint's in a little bit rough shape, but I actually don't mind the way it looks. 
even being a little bit rougher. All right, so what are we gonna do first? First, we're going to uh, take the engine and transmission out. I'm gonna work on getting the transmission out actually right now. I remove the shifter assembly. Uh, we're gonna pull the trans, loosen the engine, hopefully get the engine out. Uh, ben is actually coming because his Ranger, somebody cut him off in his Ranger and he downshifted the engine brake and it broke the clutch. So he needs to get that thing on the lift like tonight. So I gotta get this thing off the lift, meaning that I gotta get ready to remove this powertrain ASAP. So I'm gonna get the clutch out of it, or I'm gonna get the trans out of it, drain the coolant out of it, start getting the engine out of it right now. All right, making some good progress. We have the transmission out of Johnny's car. T5 is over there, exhaust is off. I brought your flashlight. Sorry, I forgot mine at home. <laughs> so we got the trans out. Just kind of assessing some miscellaneous stuff. Everything's covered in oil, so that's one thing to note. Second thing is there's a big, huge washer on that, which means the bell housing is probably broken behind that. And the block is broken on this side of it. So that's pretty special. I mean, that bolt probably still holds on and does its job, but it's not right. Uh, looks like a factory, maybe a King Cobra clutch or something. It's just got a Vallejo clutch. Looks like it's a factory replacement. Not sure if you ever had problems with the clutch. I'm gonna to talk to him about that in the next couple of minutes here. It was really light clutch pedal. I way to disengage it in order to get the clutch cable off. Uh, but if it holds the power, it holds the power. It's got a normal 255 tire on the back. It doesn't have a drag radial. It doesn't do like a whole lot of crazy racing with it. Bell housing's out. I'm not sure what kind of thought process was going in in the trailer park at the time that this was cut to fit a starter or something. I don't know. But there's no dowel on this side, which might have caused his starter interference because I think he had a problem with the, oh yeah, that tooth is like missing. He had a problem there. So we're, we're getting ready to pull this thing out though. What's up guys? We are bringing you uh, part two in the same video. We are slacking, and by we, I mean I, are slacking in the video editing department. So we have like four or five videos that are gonna be coming out pretty closely after this. Um, I know I made this promise to myself once already, but we wanna do like two, three videos a week. However, we are gonna bring you two parts to Johnny's teardown, one being the engine separately and one being the uh, the rest of the car, which you guys have already seen. But we're gonna tear down the engine right now and we might as well bring it to you in the same episode. ST's still alive and well, by the way. All right, guys, so I'm about to start tearing into Johnny's 302. Give you guys just kind of a general look at what it looks like at the moment. It's got some fabricated valve covers, Trick Flow 170 heads, Super Vic intake manifold, uh, equal length shorties, and everything else is pretty much standard. Nothing crazy on here. We did see that the block is broken right here. Pretty common, one that has mismatched belt housing hardware like it did. So now why are we tearing this apart? There's Johnny's car. And uh, we want to rip this apart for one, the combination isn't quite right. So we think we're going to end up putting a camshaft and valve springs in it. Uh, it doesn't really, it has everything to RPM high. It's got a 410 rear gear, but it falls on its face at like 5600, 5800. Shouldn't really be doing that. So we're probably going to end up putting a different camshaft in it, but he also has a tons of blow by. So we're probably going to do a budget rebuild with a fresh set of rings, uh, dingle ball hole in the cylinders. We're going to measure them for make sure they're not oval. Uh, but as long as they're checked out semi-close, it'll just end up getting slammed back together. Putting a whole new short block together is really not in the budget on this project. But we do want to make sure since it's all out and it's all apart, that it's as best as it can be. So anyway, I'm going to set the camera up. I'll try to get some time lapse footage for you guys. But really, we're just going to be tearing this thing down today. And all right, you guys are seeing this live with me. Uh, just got the valve covers on. Everything looks to be accounted for here. I don't see any major issues. ARP head bolts, which is nice. Trip Flow 1.6 rocker arms, which is nice. Hard and push rods, that's all good. I'm not crazy about the twisted wedge guide plates because they usually don't put the valve square. So you can get like an adjustable set because these aren't really riding on the centers, but they seem to be riding in. You know, it's totally closed, it's right in the middle, but that's not really what you want. Oh, this looks pretty good. Oh, that one looks like it got beat up by something. A couple of them. Perhaps they got damaged in shipping, but all of them did. One, two, three, four, five. So, not really sure what the story is there, but they look okay. No cross threaded or stripped heads, ARP head bolts on both sides, which is a good sign. 
One thing that is on here is cork gaskets, which are saturated with oil all the way to the end. So we like to use like the neoprene ones. They all leak at some point, most of the time. You gotta tighten them down often. These ones look like they're well past their service life and they were RTV'd on in the first place. So these will happily be thrown in the garbage. All right guys, so we're making some pretty good progress on two vehicles. The Ranger's almost back together. Ben and Dan are thrashing. Uh, the oil pump gears actually fit. Not the oil pump gears themselves, but the drive gears. Uh, if you're not familiar with the 2.3, similar to like a cam gear oil pump drive setup that's in a small block Ford. Uh, that uses like a jack shaft, an auxiliary shaft that has like cam, anyway, it, it failed. Now let's go back together. Back to Johnny's engine. So, so far, actually the rocker alignment I, I mentioned looked a little off, but it actually looks pretty good. The wear pattern on the valves. It does have some big old clunky valve springs in it. Uh, which leads to a heavy drivetrain and probably lower seat pressure than it looks like it'll make. So we'll probably uh, go to something that's more lightweight here, more RPM friendly. Uh, the head bolts, which in a factory block, should all have thread sealer on them. None of them did. So just small things. Um, he didn't mention any leaks of antifreeze, but I don't think he had it running long enough to see if the motor had any issues. He bought it used, complete. Uh, the in intake gasket alignment is less than stellar. I mean, you can see as far off of the alignment that you can see there, that's how far it off is on the inside. Now, luckily, the Super Vic, or the Victor Jr. that's on it, comes with a, a smaller port right at the end, so you could uh, gasket match it to your, to the gasket or to the head itself. So they give you some meat to play with, and it hasn't been port matched. So more than likely, this didn't cause a restriction, but and something that's like a max effort or like in the stuff that we typically put together, like you saw the video on the red car where we're port matching the intake manifold, this could become um, something that creates like a tumble effect, especially with the fuel injector being right on top on an EFI application. But it's probably okay. Just something to pay attention to when you're putting yours together. You know, make sure that this is aligned straight. So uh, the heads are actually on both of them. I'm getting ready to take them off. Uh, the front end is all done, except for the timing cover still on, but just barely. It's just got the bolts for the oil pan holding it on. Otherwise, we're gonna pull the heads off of it, see what it looks like on the inside, and uh, pretty much I'm gonna wrap this video up after that. We found the issue. Uh, so one of the main reasons that Johnny wanted to pull this engine out was it had a ton of blow-by, so that was why we were tearing it down. We weren't really planning on tearing it down uh, until he mentioned that. So it was like, well, we're gonna have it here, we're gonna have it apart, and uh, we might as well tear it apart. So. We found out the problem. Now it is a freshly machined block. Everything looks pretty clean. It doesn't look like it's had a bunch of gaskets on and off. The lifter boards are clean. The lifters look brand new. Um, everything looks good there. But typical to have like a, re a ridge at the top here from where the ring doesn't make contact at the top. So that's standard right there. You can see pretty much everything on that side. Also has that, has that same ridge. So everything was starting to look pretty good until we saw cylinder number one over here. That does not look too good. So it's got about double the ridge as all the rest. And you won't be able to see it on the camera, but I'll show it to you guys when we pull the piston out. But if I look down the cylinder wall, I can see straight to the bottom ring. There's no, oh, there you can almost see it right there but there's no top ring on this piston. You can also see there's a bunch of junk. You can also see there's a bunch of junk on the piston where these ones seem to be burning pretty cleanly. This one's got a bunch of junk on it. So that was excellent. So we pretty much figured out what we want to do with this motor. Uh, pretty simple setup. We're gonna keep it stock bottom end. We're gonna check the bearings, but since all the machine work is new on it, I'm gonna imagine that the bearings are gonna look good. Obviously we're gonna check them because we're gonna tear it apart anyway. We're going to run a dingle ball home through it. We're gonna get a set of rings, valve springs, different camshaft, different timing set. This timing set is pretty, I mean, considering that this should be new, it's pretty loose on both ends. So, that's more play than we like to see, especially if we're gonna put something that's gonna be a little bit more of a higher RPM, we're gonna with a little bit more camshaft control. So we'll probably go with a uh, uh, um, roll master unit on this. ARP bolt, and uh, we're gonna put a ZSR custom ground camshaft in it. Get those R's up. Otherwise, motor looks pretty good. Just uh, 
Minor details for getting a piston ring. It's no big deal. You got 15 more. I mean, what's what's being down one gonna do? All right, guys, great news. There's two rings missing on cylinder one. This is how I took it out of the motor, no shit. You guys confirm. I caught it. So, yeah. 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 carbon buildup in the ring slot. Or in the ring slot. All the way to the oil ring, all carbon. That is not any kind of high temp coating, ladies and gentlemen. That shit is missing two piston rings. I love this. This is what we live for. This is what we live for. Ah. I hope there's none other missing, but that is a first. Jeez, good times, good times. I mean, I'm glad we get to laugh at the owner's expense. Sorry, Johnny, but that's a good one. That's a good one. All right, guys, I just want to close out this episode by thanking you, obviously, so much for watching the teardown on this. We look forward to putting it back together, giving you guys some uh, a little bit of thrashing on it. We don't want to beat on it too bad because Johnny hasn't gotten to in many, many years, so we want him to put it through his paces. But we got everything disassembled. The block is completely torn down. Cam bearings look like new. Uh, unfortunately, the rod and main bearings do not look like new, but the wear for only having two or 300 miles is pretty excessive, which would lead me to believe that they're too tight. So we will be ordering a set of standard main bearings and obviously checking bearing clearances to see if maybe a mix and match was needed. Uh, a lot of times people will run like an oversized bearing on one half of the cup and a standard on the other side to get that bearing clearance that you want. This has oversized top and bottom. That might have just been too much. So we're going to prepare for that. Maybe we'll use that as a segue into perhaps needing both. Ranger's about to start. Yes, sir. T minus five minutes on that. And uh, yeah, that's typical Monday here at Streetcar Shenanigans. So thank you guys so much for watching. Click subscribe down below. We are working on bringing you a ton of videos, like I said earlier in the video. So thank you so much for watching this one. We have many more projects to come, and we'll see you guys in the next episode.